Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, my name is Shutama, but everybody calls me Shoot for short. That's my nickname. I've gotten that nickname since 1976. So again, I haven't been really shooting videos at all um, for YouTube. So life's been busy and um, I've been doing so much, but basically my YouTube channel is gonna be surviving your timeline. Basically you're gonna go, I'll be shooting videos talking about different times in my life from like the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, 2020, and hopefully and beyond. So basically, um, again, I'm Shoot is my YouTube channel. And um, I started uh, to reflect on my life in the last couple of years. Um, so now I'm 56 years old. Next week, I'm gonna be 57. And I feel like there's, uh, I still don't know what purpose in life, what my purpose is, but been there and done there and that for me. So now, um, so I'm basically, I'm trying to find, find some time to shoot more videos um, with the content of gearing towards how me as a person to survive my timeline. Okay, so if, this could be a background video. Uh, my background, again, I'm Cambodian. Came here in 1976, just me and my dad. After the Vietnam War was ended, my dad and I happened to be separated from my family and we became a prisoner. And then we escaped from a prison camp and we basically walked to Thailand and we became refugees at the Thailand border. And we got sponsored by the US government and that's somehow we were flew from Thailand to Providence, Rhode Island. So I've been here since 1976 and life has been nothing but, <clears throat> I would say miracle for me, my situation. So I feel like that my story is a little bit different than your typical average Joe. So not only physically, mentally, but you know, as a person developing, becoming who I am today, a lot of people or friends and family has helped shape that progression. So here I am today, this is October 2024. It's the best month of the year because it's my birthday month. But anyway, um, so being a Libra, you know, if you believe in all that constellation stuff, I try to balance my life. And even when I go meet people, I always, some people always stay comfortable with me. I try to help them out and I try to balance all my friends and family. I get along with everybody. So again, this is my YouTube channel and I haven't been shooting videos, but I'm gonna stop now because I'm at the point where now all my children are grown. But I have one son that moved back home with me. He's 25 years old. <laughs> he got a job in Rhode Island. So I live in Rhode Island. I have a daughter who lives in Massachusetts. And I also have a daughter, an oldest daughter. She's 34. She lives in another city in Rhode Island. She has two sons. So I have, I'm a grandfather with two grandsons, 11 and 13 years old. So here I am. So what happened? So a couple of years ago, I started thinking about what I can do to become, maybe like to be a role model or a, an influencer to certain people where they might need, you know, an inspiration or a different story. And trust me, everybody has a story. So real background, uh, since I've been in this country, I was fortunate enough to be raised by an Italian family. They accepted me as one of their own since 1976. It's almost 50 years now that I've been um, in this state and life is full of ups and downs so you know I've been there and done it so you know I graduated high school college got married family bought a you know American dream beautiful home in middle-class America like type you know with a SUV a minivan a swimming pool two-car garage you name it whatever the standard so-called American dream is I did it so but you know life is up and down so i got divorced my wife left me in 2009 
uh, left me with two kids. They were 10 and 12, never gave up. And thank God for my Italian family. They were there to help me raise my kids. So now I put them to private high school, college, they're all graduated. So what am I gonna do now? So, you know, I had, you name it, I've done it. First police officer in the state of Rhode Island, first police officer in the city of Providence, Rhode Island. And, you know, I love the job, love the people. I mean, to this day, I see people, they, they love, I love seeing my ex, you know, people I used to work with, all the ex-cops and stuff. But it wasn't for me, so I left, I became a entrepreneur, you know? I went and bought houses, I opened up a restaurant, I opened up a real estate company, a mortgage company, and I was doing very well, you know? I bought the beautiful home, got married, went on vacation, cruises, Florida. So I did the, the whole nine yard as a family man. So things happened, so when I got divorced, I had a restaurant. My ex-wife left me and her mother left me because her mother was helping me cook in the restaurant. It was all her recipes, all her cooking. So I had to learn that and I had to survive on my own. And, you know, certain people would, they were happy that things happened that way to me because people, you know, being Cambodian, people are jealous, you know, your own kind is always jealous of you. But that never stopped me. So I proved everybody wrong. I was able to keep the restaurant running. A year, a couple of years later, after I filed bankruptcy and stuff, I built my credit up. I was able to save enough money to buy a building, okay, a restaurant with an uh, apartment on top of it. So I was making money collecting rent, renting, you know, the apartment upstairs and cooking downstairs in the restaurant. And after that, it was a lot of work, the restaurant. So thank God for COVID. When COVID came around, I decided to close the restaurant down because my girlfriend whom I met in 2009 when I got divorced, she helped me in the restaurant. And it's a lot of work. I didn't want to put her through that, you know, being in the restaurant business. So we decided to close up and we converted the restaurant into an all rental property now. So we're doing good. Uh, the building pays for itself. And now I work at a school, a private school department. I'm a building maintenance guy. I'm also, they sent me to school to get my school bus license, my CDL license. So I'm always busy. Plus I'm still doing handyman jobs here and there. So that's my background. Um, it's all about surviving the timeline. I did what I had to do to survive my timeline. And now about, I would say about five years ago, being raised Italian, my grandma used to make these gravy blocks. She would make a gravy sauce for me, put it in this little Tupperware square boxes, and I would put it in the freezer, and she would say, just throw it out, boil a pot of macaroni, and you could have it as a meal. So picture me, I'm five seven. I was like, you know, raised Italian, so the food was great, you know, all the spaghetti, the macaroni, the meatballs. It was, I was walking around like, most of my life averaging like almost 200 pounds, maybe 210, 215 at one point. And I have pictures by the way too. Um, so now, again, 56 years old, I'm gonna be 57 next week. And I wanna sh just, what am I doing? Man? Like why am I losing the weight that I'm losing? Because I, I feel like I gotta take care of myself and I wanna be a role model to other people. Uh, it's so hard, but, you know, I walk through my own tombs. People say, oh, shoot, you look so thin. Are you sick? Are you okay? But when I was heavy, they would say, are you okay? I mean, a lot of weight, you know? And so, so you can never satisfy people. So you got to tune that all out. It's nothing about, don't, if you go through life, you got to try to just walk your own path, listen to your own tunes, and do what you feel is right. So what I feel is right is like, I wanna be around for my grandchildren. And again, I'm, you know, my father and my real father, he's still alive. He's gonna be 90 years old, February. Probably one of the oldest living Cambodian refugee in the world. So I'm very fortunate to have his genes. But my purpose of what I'm doing to lose weight is, I wanna go back to my country 
So I have things to do. Like I want to find my family. There's no way I feel it. There's um out of ten people, my mom and dad. Okay, my original family, my mom and dad. My whole we have ten children. Not all of them are gonna be dead. There's no way. I did the 23 of me, the DNA uh, thing. Um, obviously, my sibling would have to do that too in order for me to find siblings. But I got third, fourth, fifth cousins. To me, it's not relevant because they're like, that's too distant. Again, maybe if there's a first or second cousin, I'll respond to the email. But right now, to me, fourth, fifth cousin, that's irrelevant. Um, not putting, you know, they are blood, but still, that's kind of a distance. So that's why I'm trying to lose my weight, trying to be physically fit. And maybe I can, you know, be an, an inspiration to certain people, how they, certain things they went through life. Maybe I can share all my experiences. And believe me, I've gone through ups and downs of life. You know, being a police officer, um, your wife leaving you with two kids, um, surviving uh, a bankruptcy, uh, losing everything after you have everything. You know, it, it was devastating for me to go from having a beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful children, house, cars, trips all over the world, Florida every year, New Hampshire, you know, going from that to like, what, you know? No more wife, no more family. I mean, what do you do? So I believe I have that kind of experience and the ability to uplift myself and get out of certain situation. Being resilient is who I am. And e being able to balance life as a Libra, I think it's, I mean, I'm not into constellation, all these styles and numbers shit, but I feel like I balance everything and I'm very adaptive in my life. And right now at 56 years old, I probably feel like when I was in high school, when I was competing to get a running back position when I was playing football and playing uh, these pickup games in the ghetto and in, in Smith Hill and Providence, we, was, we used to go play in the hood and we used to play different neighbors. and. The best kids will win the game, so you had to be very competitive, competitive, fast and strong. And this was tackle. We had tackles, and we didn't have no pads or helmet. We just we tackle. We just try to kill each other, and we had fun. So that was like, damn, man. That was like the early '80s, you know. So now this is 2024, and again, I was walking around. I always worked out my whole life, so. Uh, I remember getting my first dumbbell set, I think it was 1979 or 80, 80, 81, that before, I was in middle school and I was doing this Joe Weider curling push-ups. And so now then when I went to high school, I joined the gym and don't forget, I was raised Italian. So, and that's another whole story. So I was going to this gym, you know, all the Italian, all these, hey, Joe Badafuco, you know, everybody was showing up, looking in the mirror you know, working out. Some guys had stockings on, you know, we're talking about the 80s, you know what I mean, with the headband. Um, but anyway, I wasn't one of those guys, but it was fun, you know. Those were, again, that was the era, that was the 80s, so the Italian guys, they, you know what I mean? Um, it, was, it was fun. But now, I'm 56 years old, and I'm trying to, like, get back that I want to capture those moments again and it's possible and it's all about results and here I am I mean I'm not patting myself on the back I'm saying this is my channel it's all about surviving the timeline and I'm saying if I can do it you can do it anybody in the world can do it do not listen do not follow people who is going to take you down which was, oh wow, you're sick, you lost a lot of weight, you okay? Oh, you're kind of big, you know, is something wrong? And you know, you, the doctors say you're okay, you have, so you can never please people, but you're not here to please them. You're here to please yourself, take care of yourself, okay? Uh, that I learned, it's like, you know, you make your own bed, you lie in it. So 
In my case, I gotta be around for my three children and my two grandsons, my girlfriend, and the school where I work at. They need me. I'm a maintenance guy. I'm a school bus driver. I have people that depends on me, okay, that depend on me, that needs me. Uh, my daughter needs me to go. She moved into a new apartment in Boston. She's going to need me to go hang up some curtains. Or my grandsons, they're in elementary and middle school. They're going to need me for advice for if they play sports or whatever because my daughter's a single mom another story um, so she's a single mom and she's 34 years old she works hard you know so but that's what I'm trying to say if you you gotta have perspective everybody has a story everybody has it I'm telling you right now when I had the restaurant okay I'm going into random trying to give people a little background customers would come to me and they find out that I was cooking and they would talk to me and ask me about my life story. And I was telling them, like, they said, shoot, you got an awesome story. You should write a book. This is like 20 years ago. So now I finally wrote a book. It's on Amazon. So a Cambodian dude didn't speak a word of English. I'm a freaking author now. So I have a book on Amazon. It's called Surviving Your Timeline, Grown Up Italian. So... It's a fun book to read. It's like, I think it's under 100 pages. And the way I wrote the book was, it's basically a biography telling my timeline of my life. And I incorporate the pictures that goes with my story. So you'll see a picture of me in my elementary school, my first ESL classroom, English as a second language. So it's a pretty cool book. I think it's, I haven't pushed it yet because everything has a timeline. So this, I'm kind of excited because I feel like my story, if it can change one person in the world, I'm happy with that. I'm not doing it to make money because if I, if I was trying to make money in a book, I'd be pushing it, advertising it on Amazon. I'm not. I make like maybe two or three dollars a month off it. It depends on if people buy the book or they do the ebook if they read a page. I don't care right now. I just want to keep writing. So I'm going to be writing. I just wrote my first book ever and it's on Amazon. So. I mean, here's a dude, I did it. So if I can do it, why can't you? If I can lose 40 pounds, 30 pounds, 50, why can't you? So that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's October, 2024, and I'm gonna be 57 next, next week. So what I wanna do is I wanna show people how I survived my timeline, okay? From your wife leaving you uh, with two kids, uh, running a restaurant, paying all the bills, bankruptcy, buying your first uh, property after bankruptcy, finding a job, driving Uber, doing Airbnb, working as a handyman, uh, getting a job at a school, driving a school bus now. So all of that is good. But my ultimate goal is the reason, two reasons why I'm doing YouTube and I'm writing books I want to find my family. There's no way that all of my brothers and sisters are dead. There's 10 of us. My dad and I were separated, put in a prisoner camp. You got to read the book. We escaped. We walked to Thailand. Took us two weeks because we walked that night. We never got bitten by a snake or eaten by any tigers. We got lucky. We dodged some soldiers. It's all about your destiny and somebody up there is watching over me and my dad why i won't know till the end so here 50 years later now i'm in rhode island the smallest state in the country where did they send me as a refugee of war to the city of providence rhode island providence is that a coincidence i grew up in providence rhode island so that, to me, is divine intervention. If, you, if you're not a religious person or if you don't believe in this, believe in that, something in everybody in this world, in this universe, somebody, we're all connected somehow spiritually. Somebody's helping us to survive or something like that. So that's a whole new story. But right now, I want to concentrate on how I survive my timeline. So the two reasons to get in shape 
and to survive my timeline is I want to be able to because eventually I'm gonna have to go back to Cambodia and do some mouth swapping DNA testing there's no way all my brothers and sisters are, are dead and the other reason is I want to be available around to spend time with my grandsons and my future grandchildren and for me to do that I had to change my lifestyle so to get into my lifestyle is you know being raised Italian eating Italian food the macaroni the pizzas the, the meatballs the bread and spaghetti macaroni the manicottis and all the holidays the prosciutto the soups the all that stuff I was walking around literally at five seven walking around like 200 pounds 205 195 that's a lot of weight for a short dude. So now about two, three years ago, I really started concentrating and I was going through some photos. I found a photo of my first daughter, 19, she was born 1990. I was a junior in college and there was a picture of me holding my daughter, my first daughter. And I saw the six pack I had. It was, I think it was in a backyard pool or something. And I was holding my first daughter and I had a six pack. I'm like, damn. I want to look like that dude again. So now, two years later, I started my journey like maybe 195, 200, let's just say 200. I'm down to 155, 152 now. And how I did that, and that's, I'm gonna be shooting videos of how I did that now. So this is more like an introduction of my video. And I'm working on uh, my website right now. I'm working, on, I'm gonna get better content, more videos on YouTube. And I got a couple of stuff in the pipeline that I'll be telling you, talking you about. So hopefully one of the one of the pipeline projects I'm doing, once that gets picked up, I'm gonna be making some passive income. It's gonna give me some ability to go forward and maybe ultimately to stop working at the school, which is gonna be sad because I love going to work at school, being a role model to the all the boys, because it's a private Catholic school, all boys school. And I love driving a bus, taking those field trips and all that stuff. But I also have a life, the future that I have to think about in my family. So, and I'm 56 years old, I'm not 30 or you know 25. I can't be working as a maintenance man and driving a school bus all my life, the rest of my life. So I wanna, I feel like maybe my time could be better utilized online to become an inspiration, maybe a guest speaker, or maybe a traveling speaker. And doing what I'm doing now, being physically fit and losing the weight and shooting videos of how I overcame certain things and surviving all my timeline so far. We're talking about the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000, 2010 and beyond. So we're at 2024 now and I've never felt this good since maybe when I was in high school or back in the day when I was playing, growing up in the hood in Providence, in Smith Hill, we used to play pickup football games, basketball games against all different neighborhoods. And to get accepted by the neighborhood, you know, it was a rough neighborhood. I had to be competitive, I had to be fast, I had to be a good tackler, I had to be a good shooter, good layup, good dribbler. So I want that competitiveness back and I'm trying to get that now. And I, I hit the lottery of fitness because the school I work at is an all boys school, Catholic, and one of the graduates who I met who came back and spoke as a public speaker for the kids to inspire the young kids, I met him and I can't say his name because I don't have his permission yet. And I met him and I'm like, damn, I wanna, he inspired me, young dude, you know? So I could be his father, but anyway, um, he accepted me and I said I hit the lottery of fitness he volunteered, he said he's willing to train me to get in shape and I can also help him in his training. So again, I'll be shooting videos about that and he taught me how to box and how to, I'm, I met him a few, uh, maybe a couple of years ago and I just started training him in August. So it's been like two months and off and on. So now he's got me, I'm at the point where I'm at 155, 152 now, when I was like almost 200 pounds. Uh, I feel really good, and I think, in my honest opinion, I've done a lot of martial art discipline. I worked out all my life. Running, learning the boxing skills, and just doing a, a 
typical training, boxing training, it's probably one of the best discipline to get in shape and to be ready, you know what I mean? Ready when, you know, it's like insurance. You never know when you're gonna need insurance. Just like boxing, the skill, you never know when you're gonna confront somebody in the street, but having the ability a martial arts background to defend yourself or being a boxer, to be able to subdue somebody with one punch or even avoiding an attack, there's no, this that's priceless, you know? You can have all the money in the world, okay? But if you're not healthy, how are you gonna enjoy it? I have friends now, well, it's a little sensitive story, but I have friends who, who got all the money in the world, millionaires, but they're not healthy. So what good is it? So I believe health is wealth. And I'm blessed that I am where I am today. I'm gonna be 57 years old next week. What, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, you know, excited about my future as far as continuing my, you know, carrying on my legacy and just helping anybody that I can have contact with. Um, so that's basically my channel, Survive Your Timeline. And I'll be shooting more videos. Maybe I'll do a video when I'm at the gym with my friend after asking permission because it's great to see, you know, like this 56 year old guy practicing boxing in the ring with young guy, 23, 22 years old. You know, they're all young and here I am competing with them and going, you know, a couple of rounds right now. Three minute rounds seems like an eternity when you're in the ring and somebody's coming after you, trying to hit you and you're trying to defend yourself and you're trying to hit them. It, three minutes seems like, oh, I mean, it's terrible. The, I, I'll explain to you. It's like, it's like the end, like you can't breathe. You're like, you're like, you're trying to defend yourself, you're trying to hit, and then you're like, oh, when's that bell gonna ring? It's forever, you, and you're gasping for air, and you, there's no air, like for me personally, because I'm, I'm an old man, and plus I'm not in shape, but my goal is to be able to do like five or six rounds, you know? That's my ultimate goal. But again, when you're in that ring for three minutes, and you're defending yourself, and you're swinging, and you're hitting, you're punching, and you and and and, he, and the opponent's coming after you, hugging you and pushing you, and then trying to hit you. It's like forever, three minutes, you know. So imagine them, these guys doing twelve rounds. That's unbelievable. So I'm practicing that. So I have a gym here. This is my home gym with a punching bag and some sit-up benches. And I I bought myself a trampoline, so I bounce a lot because it's good boxing. It's good for your bouncing. And then I also have my rental property, it used to be my old restaurant. I made a basement, a gym in a basement for all the kids who live there. So I have, and that gym that I work out there a lot too, is I have a bench, I have a lot of free weights, I have a roll machine, and then the bench, you can do legs, squats, you know? So it's all about surviving your timeline and you have to figure out how you have to adapt each decade in your life. So hopefully, my video can inspire people. If not, then just move on to the next channel. I'm not here to, I'm not here doing this to make money because I'm all set. I have a great job. I have a rental property that pays for itself. I'm looking to retire to find my family and just leave my legacy to my kids and for my son and my two daughters, my two grandsons. I mean, again, you know, I, I don't wanna be, give you a sad thing, but we're all in line, and it, we don't know when we're up, when we're next. You, and again, I see YouTube videos, I love it. You can't cut your line, you can't skip your line, you're in line, that's it. When I say you're in line, it's, you don't even know when you're next, you're not, you have one chance to dance in life. So that's what I'm doing. I make the best of it every day. I, right now, I love being a physically fit person. I run probably five to six days a week. I eat right, and I try to f make myself feel good, take some time off for myself, and just breathe and just enjoy life, okay? And not think about the past, you know, and not think about the future, but it's the present. Cause they call it the present because it's a present. We don't know what the future is. We already know what the past was. So just take it a day by day and move forward and create something positive in somebody's life. So basically that's what it's all about. This is my channel 
I thank you for listening to me and your patience of watching my video. And hopefully I'll shoot uh, more videos about uh, things in my life. Like, you know, when I got, when my, let's say example, when my wife left me, maybe somebody want to know how they, how to survive. How did I overcome when you, you know, I had a beautiful wife. She was young, beautiful. Everybody, you know, said, how did you get that? How did you get your wife? You're not, well, you know, things happen. So, uh, again, so I'll shoot a video saying how I survived. You know what happened? You know, I'll be honest with you. When my wife left me, and this is, I'm going to go to tell you the truth. When one door closes, another door opens. Just so happened, another beautiful girl walked into my life. She walked into my restaurant, and I said to myself, I'm never, ever going to go with another Cambodian girl. Never date another Cambodian girl. And what happened? Never say never. A beautiful Cambodian girl walked into my restaurant, and I've been with her ever since. So life moves on, and that's what it's all about. Okay, so hopefully you come back to my video. I'll make better videos. Thank you for being patient.